So I want to start because I can't not start here with talking about your background because, you know, just to read off a few things, um, you know, you've worked as an advisor to the White House on the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. You were the founder of Sidewalk Labs. You were the director of special projects for the CEO at Google. Incredibly impressive. Very, you know, it's not traditional things you find on, on someone's resume. Give us a quick sketch of your background and your journey through these roles because they seem disconnected. I'm sure they all make sense somehow. <laughs> Yeah, sure. So, you know, most people, uh, maybe the way they think about their lives is they think about it by industry, right? They say, like, I'm a healthcare person, or I'm an education person, or whatnot. I've taken a very different approach. Um, I've kind of always just been fascinated with, uh, with kind of problems more than solutions. And so I actually kind of always walk around for it. And I tell people, ah, you know, like, solutions don't really matter, problems matter, and intimately understand problems. And and what I've always been interested in is how can I help people, right? And when I look at when I look at humanity, when I look at society, I see like, well, oh God, we have like so much pain, we have so many problems in the world. And when you kind of start to to peel back the layers of the onion, you realize that you can solve those problems with so many different facets, right? You can solve them with policy. You can solve them with AI, you can solve them with education, you can solve them with healthcare. And that's what's driven me into so many different sectors, right? But I've mostly kind of all had the one common thread, which is I've tried to live my life fundamentally just in service of others. And I know that sounds really kitschy and I said it sounds really awful, but but in some ways I've just from from day one just always tried to say, well, what can I do to help? Now, early on, um, I, uh, I dove in a lot into kind of computers, like, like, any, uh, like any good nerd, right? I got into computers. And I spent a lot of time in the world of AI. Turns out that my dad, uh, my dad was a linguist. He studied under Chomsky. And if you think about what linguistics is, it's really trying to just understand, like, how does the brain really understand language? It turns out that, you know, what you learn in third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade English books that teach you language, it turns out you can feed all of those books into a computer and it's still not enough for uh, for you to actually understand language. It turns out that your brain is doing something else. And this is what linguists are trying to figure out is what is that something else? What do you intuitively know about language? And so this is this was my first interest is like figuring out if we can figure this out, if we can kind of codify this AI, maybe we can make computers intelligent and have them help us even more. So I spent a bunch of time in the world of AI. And in that, I started a company that Google ended up acquiring. Now, once I did that, I spent some time at Google. Um, and actually, kind of that started kind of going along this interesting path because then I said, well, how else can I help people? And, uh, and our CEO at the time was Larry Page. Larry asked me to come kind of um, spend some time as his right-hand man. And I spent a few years running special projects for all of Google, right? And what I, in essence, did was I spent time creating the alphabet companies, which was, in essence, like, basically, I was a kid in a, in a candy store. It was like, hey, Google's got a lot of money. Let's see what companies we can create to go solve the world's problems. Like, what, what could be more fun than that, right? So you're right. I started Sidewalk Labs, which was working on uh, solving urban environment problems. But one of the things that we also did was we said, well, can we take our knowledge of, of technology and our knowledge of how we operate across the globe. And can we use that to kind of even help out at, uh, at the White House? So um, Eric Schmidt, who, has, uh, who I'm pretty close to, he said, well, why don't we go ahead and get involved? This was during the Obama administration and see if we can go kind of uh, give a hand over there. Now, I'm not a policy expert. I know very little about policy. So in essence, what I did was I just said, look, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and just give some insight on where I think technology is going. The reality is in the world of policy, this ends up being a paper that goes to a committee, that goes to a policy, that goes to a bill, that goes to I don't really know. At the end of the day, I'm someone who likes to build. This is why I'm not in politics and probably never will be. So I spent only a little time there. Um, uh, and then basically I said, look, this is really great, but I want to go back to building. And, uh, and so what I did was I left Google to, uh, to start this company forward. Now, now the reality is I don't have a background in healthcare. I've never been interested in healthcare. In fact, today I'm not interested in healthcare. In fact, when, I, when people come to me and they tell me they're interested in healthcare, I almost look at them like, like they're a little crazy. I'm like, what part of this industry interests, interests you? Is it, is it the billing codes? Is it the paperwork? Is it the, like, the insurance companies? Like, like literally, it's like, it's fucking awful. Like, why are you interested in this, right? Um, on the other hand, I am interested in helping people. And I saw it pretty viscerally. I had a, a pretty close family member of mine who had a heart attack a few years ago. And I went from not paying attention to this to like overnight being pretty laser focused. And then I said, okay, this is broken. This, this is garbage, right? And, and in, in the year 2022, you look around you and you go like, wait a minute, we've got technology and everything. 
you know, I'll give you an example. You, you've seen Ford. You've seen what it's like, right? You walk into our exam rooms and you've got this beautiful touch screen on a wall. You've got a model of your body and all the data has been overlaid on top. And I remember right after we launched Ford, I brought the CEO of Kaiser in, right? The, the U.S.'s largest healthcare system. I bring him in and he looks at Ford. He walks around. He looks at our body scanner. He looks at that screen and he says, I've seen the future. He's like, this is the most advanced healthcare system I've ever seen. Of course, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, of course, because I'm so smart and I'm so great and I'm, and I'm, you know, obviously pretty full of myself and I'm feeling pretty good. But then I take a step back and I'm like, wait a minute, we started this company 12 months ago. I have no background in healthcare. Like, what the hell is going on right now, right? And I realized, like, wait, you know what? Like, think about it. Like, you walk into McDonald's and there's a touch screen on the wall, right? Like, why, why would you walk into healthcare? Is there no touch screen? Like, it's not that we're so advanced. It's, that the, it's all of healthcare is so fucking backwards. Like, how did we end up in this world? And you realize that, like, the healthcare industry is so broken, so backwards, that it's just time for us to, like, bring some level of just basic competence to the industry, right? So, so one of the one of the things I always think about is like, can we just not kick you when you walk in the front door? If we don't kick you when we walk in the front door, we're probably doing something right, you know? Because at least then we're beating the existing system. So, so to answer your original question, it might look like I've taken a circuitous route, but in some ways, all I've tried to do is just help people along my path.